get put out. Wait a minute, you ain't got no, no letter, no note, nothing that, that, that would suggest they're putting you out. Here you are already worried, sweat, sweating bullets, oh dear God. But the devil will always put them things in your head, watch this, to usher in fear. Watch it now because fear is a conduit to bring things in your life that God didn't have planned for your life. Or hear me. But Paul said that God has not given us the spirit of fear. Amen. But a power of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Come on, can I say no fear here? No fear. And so what we have to do then is train our mind. Train our mind, watch this, to stick with what God has already said. I know that's right. Now, Pastor, how do I do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. You train your mind how to stick with the word. First of all, whenever God gives you a promise, write it down. Write it down. Because if you don't write it down, watch this, you really have no reference point. Consider this. Because when life gives you contradictions that don't resemble what God said, if I don't write down what God says and put down a verse to back up what God has already told me, when stuff hits your life, you have no reference point. Pastor, what are you saying? Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. God, we're turning. I want you to see it. Numbers chapter 13. Here it is. God told them, told Moses, Moses sent out some spies. He said, because I'm going to, I want you to go, go to a land that I've already given you. I'm trying to think whether that Lord have made Jesus. I know it's over in number 13 chapter. Da -da 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 -da
season where you don't sense God's presence. Watch this. It's because God is taking you through a season of maturing you. Amen. That's the way you're saying. A baby needs to have milk all the time. A baby yearns for the breast of that mother. A baby yearns for the heat, the warmth of, the, of, the, of that mother's body. But there comes a time where the mother says, I'm putting you in your own bed. Amen. Now, the child will go to bed while they are asleep. But in the middle of night, that child wakes up and realizes that mama ain't there. Now, mama could be in the next room, could be in the same room, but because the child doesn't feel around, the child says, let me holler. Now watch this. They almost sound like Christians, don't they? Uh, that's good. I'm somebody say, they almost sound like you. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> that's the that's like church for that preacher. It's not like church for which God. Dad, God, where you at? Come on, because we have become so accustomed to feeling God. We'll pray. Say, God, I want to feel your presence. And listen, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it. But if you have to always feel God's presence, then you're still a baby Christian. Amen. All right. Amen. You, 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 you're still immature. You're saying, God, come on. God, keep me on, on the gospel tip, God, because I ain't ready to come off yet, Lord. All right. All right. But when I can trust him and know he's not, know he's there, but I don't feel nothing. All right. Come on. When all I got is what he said. All right. See, I watch this. Abraham, y'all, didn't have the uh, Old Testament. No, he didn't. Abraham, then, Abraham didn't have that. Uh -huh. All Abraham had, watch this now, was what God told him. Amen. Imagine 20-some 20, 20 years he is coming, waiting on Isaac all this time and all he had was what God told him. Uh -huh. And the Bible says, the Bible says, Abraham staggered not as a promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, watch this now, giving glory to God, because Abraham knew this one thing, that he was faithful, watch this, that promised. Amen. Now, here was the challenge. Abraham had to go through a whole lot of stuff. Yes, he did. They came to try his faith yes. to get him, watch this, into unbelief. But Abraham, watch this now, in Abraham's mind, Abraham had to see that child as already being here before it got here. That's not how you know. Because uh, he kept on trying. He tried at 75, 85, 90, until he was just dead. But watch this, even in his deadness, he said, I'm going to try one more time. Come on. He said, come on, God. I'm dead. And uh, <laughs> this girl here, she a prune. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Praise God. But watch this, though. It's amazing. Watch this, though. But, 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 but look, he was still willing to keep on pushing. Because God told him he was going to do it. Now, watch this. See, most of us don't realize that Abraham had more kids after Isaac. I don't know what he had, but uh, Pastor Mark, tell me that. I'm going to ask God for me some when, when I, I turn down. Say, yes, Lord. Come on. Praise him. In 95, I said, Lord, give me some of everything I've had. I don't want no kids, Lord, but uh, anyway, I'm moving on. What a word here, praise the Lord. But this, see, see, when God put, <laughs> when God put something on your life, your job is going to be have, be there to, to walk out what God says, yes. even though nothing resembles what God has told you. All right, all right. And hear me, family, over your life, oh dear God, over the course of your life, I guarantee you, you will walk upon situations, man, that will take you by surprise, right. and stuff won't, listen, <laughs> You like God? Why me? Tell so, I me, mean, if I had a, a God, why me moment? I'm sure all of us have. You know, I mean, we may not say it in church, but at home, we're like, come on, my Lord, here I am. Anybody ever said, Lord, I'm living all I can, 
this, this guy here is, is strung out to, to the tenth power. Looking like he's healthy, he's eating good. Well, okay, come on. Like God, how about him? <laughs> you know, he want to get somebody else. But watch this. Can God use you? Can God use us to show himself strong to the world? All right now. Amen, somebody. And so listen, this word, y'all, is more than just preached out. It's got to be lived out. Amen. Yes, See, the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But, but. See, we, we don't shout on that part about the afflictions. Because we don't like afflictions. But see, we can all shout on the butt. All right. Because the butt changes the whole scope of, of what you're saying. But says the devil is busy, but God is busier. Amen. The devil is attacking, but God has an attack proof plan. Yeah. See, watch this. One of the things, y'all, I've been telling myself, there is nothing bigger than God. Nothing. Right. Nothing. Right. nothing the devil can throw at you and I as born again believers that's bigger than God. I don't care what the devil say, doctor say, lawyer say, Amen. nothing is bigger, Amen. watch this, and should be weightier in your life than what God says yeah, to you. Right. Because what's this, y'all? When, when you can't feel God, you better know what he said. Yeah, I know that's right. right. Come on, when your back is up against the wall for real, you better you better subscribe, you, you better know what he said. I know that's right. Because what this people will give up on you. That's right. Amen. Oh, yes. They'll tell you there's no hope. They'll tell you it's impossible. But oh, listen, anybody know that, 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 that as long as I know God, yeah. I always got a chance to win. Amen. 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 And so our job in your is to see ourselves already out. Wherever, wherever you in, see yourself already out of that situation. Uh -huh. Put you all on Sunday. Listen, my mind is I'm so far in April and May. Right. I am. I, I, I'm so no, I, I've already seen myself in the process, out the process, and preaching again. Right. Now, I told a, 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 a buddy of mine, I said, man, I'm already in the pulpit, and I ain't even been to the process yet. He said, man, listen, if I were you, I would take as long as I can. I said, I like preaching. Amen. I do what, what I'm called to do. Amen. I said, if I have somebody listen to what I preach seven days a week, Amen. all I need is somebody to sit and listen to me. Give me an hour a day, I preach every day one hour. I would. Amen, Amen I would. Amen. Give me some mind. Listen, bless God, I'll preach. I, I love doing what I do. Because it's my, it's my call to life. He, can't, he don't like it. He really, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but see, I've already seen myself back in the place that God has set me in. All right. And so if I stay and focus on what's coming up, I'll freak out into what's coming. All right. This is why God don't, don't tell you everything up front. Oh, he does. Cause look, you know, like I do, if God told you the trial for tomorrow, tomorrow's crisis, you would, <laughs> Lord, you'd be, you'd be, before the balance started, you'd be already worn out. Come on. Wait till the balance over, you shout now, and then you, now you'd be screaming right now, loud, Jesus, what happened? It ain't started yet. And so when you, but, but when you know, when you know that God has already viewed your life from his finished place, you can walk up, look, watch this now, and look at the devil straight square in the eye and say, oh, no, I'm already out of this even though you think I'm, I'm, I'm in it right now. Right. Somebody say, I'm already out right now. Right. Now, go, go to Ephesians. This is going to be a lit, lit off on last week. Ephesians chapter number one. And we got so caught up in that last week until, dear God, I, 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 I preached myself happy last week. Lord, dear God. Here it is, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus, and you and I uh, at large, and he's telling us that God has already given us all spiritual blessings in heavenly places by Christ Jesus. Come on, class, say, I have been given all spiritual blessings right now. This here is what Paul is trying to instill in the minds of the people here at Ephesus. And you and I as well. That whatever you and I are begging and pleading and fasting and crying and having a fit over, God says that is already taken care of. All right. Whether it be your healing, deliverance, your money, whatever issue you are facing right now.
right now, God has already provided that need. And as far as God is concerned, it's already done. Oh, dear God. In Mark chapter number 11, in verse 23, Jesus said, when you stand praying, he says, believe, you receive. When you stand praying, believe, you receive. Watch this. When you file your income tax this year, and they didn't give you a check on the spot. They told you, for those of you who did the, uh, Rapid refund. They told you that your money would be in the bank in 48 hours. How many of y'all start spending the money before the 48 hours was up? You already had it planned out. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy this. I'm buying that. And the money hadn't hit the bank yet. But watch this. What made you start planning for tomorrow? It's the word you have today. You saw the money as already being there. So watch this. You start planning for tomorrow. Is it possible that the reason many of God's folks don't plan for success is because we don't see success on the horizon? We see failure as an option, and many of God's folks embrace failure instead of the success. But if you can take the word of a tax man, how much more weight should you not give God's word? Amen. And so God says, I have given you. Come on, can I say given? Yeah. He said, I have given. If I have given, it would suggest that you already got. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that's bad English, but if, if God said, I have given, then it would suggest that you already have. Okay. Come on, can I say, I already have. Oh. And so if I already have, then my job is to access what already belongs to me. Amen. Come on, can I say, I must access what already belongs to me. Whatever you need from the Lord, your job is to access by faith what already belongs to you. The Bible says that all the promises of God are accessed by faith. Simply saying this, that it's already mine, but if I don't believe it's mine, if I don't know it's mine, I won't go after it. Let me see if I, if I can say it like, like this. Some folks write what I call faith checks. Pastor, what's a faith check? I'm glad you asked. Some folks write faith checks. First of all, I'm going to say this. A faith check is a fraud check. A faith check should be called a fake check. They say, Lord, I'm going to write a check for $100 in faith. Now, you know, before you write it out, all you got there is $10. But you're going to believe God that somebody give you the other 90. Now, you know, and I know, don't matter, owe you no money. <laughs> you can let you can sell for ninety dollars Come on. But you don't give God a faith check. That, that, that's foolishness. I know, that's right. You want a faith check, a faith check, if you know it's there, it's all you got. Lord, I'm giving you this by faith. Good. This is all I got. Well, the, the girl who had the two widows mics, that was a faith check. God, all I got is two wolves mice, which is equivalent to one penny in our U.S. currency. Lord, all I, this is all I got, Lord, and I'm depending on you. And watch this, y'all. Jesus stopped the offering line. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And you would have thought that when Big Boy brought, brought in his $10,000 check, Jesus said, oh, praise the Lord, $10,000. No. It was the girl who brought in two wolves mice. You see, y'all, hold on a minute. But look at here. Girl, you gave more than a month. And he noticed, watch this, what she gave caught his attention more than those who gave out of their abundance. Wow. But she gave knowing that some kind of way God was going to bless her life. And watch this, Jesus blessed her as a result of her giving. Amen. And so watch this, when you and I understand that whatever we need from God, we out of it to access it by faith. Then watch this, then I don't pray as though God does not have it for me. I pray knowing that God wants to get it to me. Watch this. You and I get to receive what God already has laid up for us. The Bible said it's in, well, look here in uh, verse number number three. And the deep part, the deep part of the birth, the first. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ.
Christ. And so if it's in heavenly places in Christ, and since Christ then is my brother, if you, I don't think your brother would want to hold stuff from you, would he? If he shouldn't. Especially if it's yours. Ain't my thank God that he ain't like your brother. <laughs> Glory to God. Because I know some folks, but anyway, I, I move on that one too. But look here at verse number four. This here, I believe, don't bless you. It says, according as he has chosen us in him, watch this now, before the foundation of the world. Now, in scripture, look at me for a minute. In scripture, when you study our scripture, understand this. There's a, a, a thing called coupling verses. Come on, can I say coupling verses? Coupling verses mean that, that these verses go together. You can't take one verse and say, but this is, the, is the, the whole thought process. And so when you look at verse number three and verse number four, these verses you all go together. He says, I've given you all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he has chosen. Which means then, watch this now, God, Mr. Gene, has already picked out my blessing. All right. All right. God has already picked out my blessing. All right. But Pastor, how is that? Well, you know, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, it says this. And this is the confidence we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Right. Now watch this. If God has already picked out my blessing, watch this now, he will create a desire in me. And it is that desire that I now have that will cause me to ask for what God already had for me. Problem. 
solution. That God knew was going to come before it showed up. He has already put the answer in the planets. This is why I tell folks, y'all, there is no gas crisis. Imagine this. You think God wasn't aware that one day we would have millions and billions of cars on the planet? You think God didn't know that one day we're going to be, be burning oil like crazy? He already knew. Watch this. The problem is that the oil isn't here. Some folk can't access the oil yet. Amen. And you can't burn what you can't access. And so they told us, showed us. God said, no, it's not a show us. It's here already. But you can't get it right now. Are you following me? You recall, I believe it was a few, uh, a few years ago, they was, everybody was all worried saying, yeah, y'all, the water level getting real low. And boats couldn't come all the way up to the shore because the water level was real low. Oh, God can fix that. Just let it snow. Let it snow. Let it rain. Let ice show up. And then freeze it all. And now we got a flood. All that water we didn't have, guess what? We got water now. See, with God, there are no problems. If Christ is the answer, then if I'm in Christ, then I don't have a crisis. I say, if I'm in Christ, then I don't have a crisis. If I'm in Christ, he is the answer and my solution. My job is to stay in him to find the answer. Watch this, watch this, verse number four. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, watch this now, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Somebody said, I'm in him. Now watch this. The Bible said that faith worketh by love. And so watch this. It is safe in the same. But the reason some church folk can't access by faith the blessing is because they're working out of love with somebody. Are you aware that unforgiveness, y'all, is a is a cancer? Yes, yes, it is. I'm amazed by how many church folk who speak in tongues, they shout, they tell the whole world they own, and still walk in unforgiveness. My Lord. Because on the only thing that they can focus on is the person who wronged them. My Lord. But watch this. If you change how you think, watch this. To move to think that, to say this, Noah, before you offend me, I'll forgive you up front. Hear me, y'all. Forgiving someone is a decision you make. If I make a decision to forgive you, then it doesn't matter what you do, I'm going to forgive you regardless. Well, let me ask you this. Is what you want from God more important than the person who's calling you to walk in unforgiveness? Listen, for what I, Mr. Mark, for what I need from God is not worth me allowing someone to keep me in unforgiveness. I know that's right. For what God has in my life, listen, I want what, I, what God has for me. I want every blessed God thing He has ordained for my life. And I won't let you keep me hating you and, and miss out on the blessing. I know that's right. Because if my faith worketh by love, if I don't love you, mean faith don't work. Are you hearing me? And so I mean, of my mind, that I don't care what you do, what you say, how you look, how you act, I'm going to love you regardless. Amen. Now, I may have to love you from a distance. That's right. All right. That's good luck. Because, thank you. I still love you. See, loving you don't mean I stand there and get sucker punched every day. That's right. Amen. I love you enough to move out your way so that I don't hit you back. Because my flesh is like yours. It will respond if you hurt me enough. Are you following me? And so watch this. Verse number five. Having predestined us to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according, watch this, Joe, to the good pleasure of his will. How somebody didn't say God really loves me? You know what? Every Wednesday on the broadcast, he asked me, he said, Pastor, Pastor Larry, how you feel, man? I said, man, God loves some Larry. All right. And y'all see his face. He just followed 
don't tell her after. I said, but, but see, I believe that. I believe that, that God, God, is, God just loves him. God, God, God is just overtaking him with a thought of me. All right. Now, you think for you what you want to. I said me. All right. See, I, I, I'm like John. You know, John said, John said, I'm the one he loved. He loved. <laughs> I'm the one he loved. Now, you can think he hates you if he wants you. I'm telling you, he loves me. See, I'm the one, I'm going to put all my right head on his bosom. All right. Glory to God. Because I want him to look, God, listen, I, you, you, I'm right here God, I'm right with you. Come on. I want to hear your heartbeat. Because I know he loves me. Yes. Now watch this. Not just when things are going my way. All right now. I can't begin to tell you how many times I, I told myself, I said, boy, God loves you. Uh, watch this. Knowing what I must face in the future, I get a mirror and say, God loves you. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, look, look, look myself right, right, right now. I say, God, God loves you. All right, amen. Cause sometimes you gotta talk to yourself. No, folks say that's crazy. No, Paul, David said, I encourage myself I in the Lord. Right, right. I said, Lord. God loves you. He said, No good thing will I will hold from you if I walk up right before God. That's right. And so listen, I, I listen. I tell me what, what God said. I tell God what he said. Right. And if, if you think long enough, I'll tell you what God said. Right. <laughs> Glory to God. Right. Yes, I will. Give me time. And I, and, 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 listen. <laughs> Give me five minutes. I tell you everything God told me today. Because listen, if you don't know God loves you in a, in a precious situation, mm -hmm. the devil will convince you that God does not love you. That's right. Amen. Pastor, how you know? I've been there. Uh -huh. Man, he will, listen, y'all, if you don't know how to talk back to the devil, I, I promise you, it. he will talk violence in your ear. Oh, yes. Anybody ever had the devil talk in your ear? Yes, sir. Now, he, he'll, he'll make you think that it's your mind just talking. But no, that's him putting subliminal messages in your mind. Amen. To see if he can get you to repeat what he's saying. Come on now. Now, he stole that from God. Mm -hmm. God said to meditate. Uh, One of the words to meditate means to mutter or repeat over again. The devil says, if I can cause God's children to repeat what I say more than what God said, then what I say, what this now, becomes more weightier than what God says. And listen, if I'm in a crisis, I can't afford to have what the devil says more weightier than God in my life. I got to know what God has said. See, Hosea said, people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. This is why it's important and vital that you and I as God's children Keeping God's word every day on a consistent basis, and if you can't read it, whatever you know, quote it out loud. Because watch this, you have to give your spirit man something to digest. Are you hearing me? Listen, y'all, the word of God is so easy to get that. You can get it on TV, on radio, on cassette, on DVD, on CD. You have to just not want the word to not get the word. Are you following me? But question, what's wrong with God's food? That we have made God so secondary that we don't we don't want to hear the word. Don't want to preach, don't, don't, don't preach to me. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to read it. I want God to, to just bless me while I do my own thing. Watch this, y'all. What obligates God to just bless you and you do absolutely nothing? You won't talk to him. Oh, Lord. You won't read his, his love letters. You won't sacrifice nothing for him. Oh, and everything is all about you. Yes. Listen, help me out and tell a person by telling me, it's not all about you. John God, it's not all about you. Not at all. It's not, listen, just like you, long for long for the sweet nothing in your ear, God longs for your voice. That's right. Come on, amen. God longs to hear your voice. God longs to hear you talk to him about what he already said. All right. 
he said, he says, put me in remembrance of my word. Now watch this. It is not that God has amnesia. But you can't tell me what I said if you have, don't know what I said. And so God says, if you tell me what I said, now I can do what I said because now you are looking for what I said. Are you hearing me? And so God desires you that you and I see life from the finished position. What is Galatians, Galatians chapter 3? Galatians chapter number 3. Galatians is right by Ephesians. Galatians and Ephesians. Turn to your left. One book. Go to verse number 3. Look at, I'm sorry, chapter 3, verse 13. Here is a vote of confidence to help you know that God has already gone to the end of your life. And he's already finished the work. Are you there, class? Watch this. Verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, come on, cursed is any man that hangeth on a tree. Watch this, y'all. If Christ then has redeemed us from the curse, watch this now. Whatever you are in or under that's not of God is a curse. Sickness is a curse. Bible says, I've been redeemed from a curse. All right. Disease is under the curse. Amen. Bible says, I've been redeemed from a curse. All right. Poverty is a curse. Uh -huh. Bible says, I've been redeemed from a curse. All right. Loneliness is part of the curse. Uh -huh. Bible says, I've been redeemed from a curse. Whatever is not of God. Okay. The Bible says, I have been redeemed from it. Now watch this. If I've been redeemed from the curse of the law, then if it's a curse, I have the right, watch this now, to cash in my redemption card. Come on, how many of y'all remember uh, eight of green stamps? Come on, how many of y'all used to get them bad boys and wear them real good and put in the book? And as soon as, and you order the catalog, because you want to know how many books I need for this item right here. Well, watch this. If Christ has redeemed me from the curse, yeah. I got to look in the book and find out what I can redeem. Right. Okay, I ain't got to be sick. Here go up. I'm, I'm cashing it in. Right. I ain't got to be broke. Right. I'm cashing it in. Right. I don't have to be homeless. I'm cashing it in. Right. Because Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Right. This is why, watch this. This is why God says, there's power in the name. The name is my redemption card. When something shows up, I can just go, Father, in Jesus' name. And I imagine y'all God being, being the clerk behind the counter. Come on, y'all, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Here it is, God behind the counter. And something comes up, up in my life. Come to the counter and say, Father, in Jesus' name. He said, Oh, they're both going to cast something in. Here come the name, okay? The, the card of redemption. Whatever it is that bothers you, it's normal because now you have given me your redemption card, and because you've been redeemed, you don't have to have what's ever in your life right now. All right. Are you following me? Because Christ has done what this, paid the full penalty for whatever coming up in my life that I don't like. Are you following me? Because if he has redeemed me, that means I'm redeemed right now. Come on, Pastor. I'm redeemed right now. See what Jesus said. Jesus said, be of good cheer. For I have overcome what is the world for you. Now watch this. What's in the world? All the devices of the enemy. Jesus says, every plan of the devil, I overcome it. Oh, and because you are in me, that makes you an overcomer as well. Amen. Amen. Somebody start to say, I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. Go to John 16. John 16, verse 33. I'm just about through. John 16, verse number 33. Show you something. See, y'all, God, God has given his word to keep, to make sure we stay in peace. Oh, dear God. Come on, because God has given me his word 
so I can stay in peace. So I, 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 I want to shout now right there. I want to run right there. He's given me his word so I can remain in peace. All right. Come on, class. Are you there in John 16? Uh -huh. Verse 33. Watch this. Jesus said, these, these things I have spoken unto you, watch this now, that, that in me you might have peace. All right. Somebody said, I'm in him. I'm in him. I employ peace. Come on, let's say, I'm in, I'm in Christ, therefore, therefore I, employ I employ peace. He said, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In this world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, because I've already done whatever it is you need. Somebody say, he's overcome already. Glory be to God. If he has already overcome, what's his name, whatever demonic force tries to influence my, my atmosphere, I have the power to cancel his assignment. Oh, right. Glory to God. Come on, class, say, I can cancel that assignment. Can cancel that assignment. Now, what's this? The only assignment you cannot cancel is the one God intends for you to walk through. Amen. But watch this. The Bible said, God said, I'll make a way of escape. Right. And so even if I'm going through something, God still give me an outclose. Yes, right. Come on, y'all, come on. Anybody ever been going through something that you, you thought what, that, that should have took you down, but God gave you peace even though you knew you were in it? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Man, man, listen, there is nothing, bless God, like having peace when oh. you know everything around you has been turned upside yeah. down. Amen. Like stuff here is falling apart. Here is falling apart. That's falling apart. And now you falling apart. Yeah, my Lord. God said, I'll give you peace in the storm. Yeah. One of the things, y'all, I learned, see, when I read over in the book of, uh, of Mark, one of the things I always reflect in my own life is that they almost missed the blessing because even though they saw Jesus, they almost overlooked him. Bible said he would have passed them by. Uh -huh. I wonder how many folks are allowing their deliverance to pass them by because uh -huh. they can't see Jesus in the storm. Uh -huh. Because watch this. Even when Jesus y'all stood up, the wind was still blowing. Uh -huh. The wind was still beating the ship. It was not until he called for peace that, the, that the, it all stopped. Uh -huh. Our job is to make sure we can employ his peace. Yes. Jesus said, my peace, watch this, I leave to you. Amen. And so if he has left his peace to me, it means I can employ his peace. Amen. And so if I can then employ his peace, it was suggesting that even in the storm, I can still tell peace be still. Right. And have a calm in the middle of my situation, knowing that some kind of way God is going to work that thing out. Amen. And curse First of all, say some kind of way, God will work it out. Look at verse number five back in, uh, in Ephesians, and I'm almost done. Back to Ephesians chapter one, look at verse number five, and I think I'll park right here for the night. It says, having predestined us unto the adoption of, of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Let me say this. It is the desire of God for you and I to have every good thing He's made for us. Whatever is on this planet that, that is good, it came from God. Yeah. All right. Amen. I say, whatever on this planet that is good, it came from God, yeah. and you and I have the right to have it. What God desires from us is to know what his blood has paid for for us. And when you and I understand what God has already paid for for us, he wants us to access it, watch this, and see ourselves as, as, as having already attained what he has already paid for us to get. If I came to your house and gave you a receipt and told you you can go to Jewel's, I have all the food you need on will call. Here's the receipt. 
Here's the person's name to ask for. Go to the counter. Here's so and so's name. Ask for them. It's already bagged up. So it's already been pulled. Just go pick it up. Okay. Watch this. You can go to the store with no credit card, no cash. Okay. All you need is ID and a receipt. Amen. Well, Pastor, what's the ID for? So that they'll know they give it to the right person. The receipt signifies that it's already paid for. All right. Amen. Your healing, deliverance, whatever you need from God, right. according to the word of God, it's already paid for. Amen. I challenge you, whatever issue you're struggling with, see yourself already out of that issue. Whatever addiction it may be, see yourself already out of that issue. Whatever hardship you're in, see yourself already out of it. I guarantee you, you will find your spirit man ready to a brand new level of expectation. Mm -hmm. because, because what the Bible says, you can have whatever you say. That's right. When you are expecting something, you talk about it. Mm -hmm. When you are expecting nothing, watch this, you talk about that too. All right. Amen. The word says you can have whatever you say. When you're living life from the finished position, you can stand and look every demon in hell square in the eye and say, it's already done. I don't care how I feel. I don't care what it looks like. And I don't care what the naysayers say. If God said it's done and bless God, I choose to agree with God and see it from the finished position. And my time is all gone. Give me a hand for somebody. Glory to God. Amen.